All right, so we are live right now. Welcome everyone to episode two of Vascast. This time we're going to have Elijah come on and he's going to be sharing about um, a near-death experience that he had where he fell from nearly 30 feet and didn't die. Um, he didn't even break his back or break any legs. God really preserved him um, and he only sustained a break to his arm. So he just joined right now. Um, let me invite him on and then we will start. Give me one second, Elijah. Okay. Morning. Any second now. Hey, Elijah. Hey, Justin. How are you doing? This is my first live ever. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, you learn new things every day. So, sure do. Um, welcome everyone. This is Elijah. I can tell he's in in the the church right now, probably getting some good business done. So we're just gonna open up. Um, and start with prayer before we get into it today. So, um, Father, we just thank you for this meeting today. Um, we don't take it for granted, Lord. We thank you for Elijah's life, what you're doing. Um, this testimony, Lord, what we're going to discuss, Holy Spirit, we just ask you to um, breathe upon this whole um, Instagram live for everyone that's watching live and everyone that will watch it in the future, Lord, that you would just touch your hearts and grant people revelation of who you are in the name of Jesus. Let your name be glorified. We just thank you and glorify your name in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 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 So if you want to give a brief introduction, feel free to. Okay. Um, myself, what I like to eat, where I like to go. <laughs> Anything. Feel free to introduce yourself. Okay. Right. So my name's Elijah. Um, I don't know how much ago. Do you want me to just give a brief uh, overview of what happened? Um, oh, yeah. So I'm going to ask some, ask some questions. But if you just wanted to say anything about yourself give anything just for any like, of the audience i like pizza i'm 21 my birthday's in may so feel free to send me money um <laughs> i'm a photographer and yeah an awesome photographer yep yeah if you need a photo shoot please um contact elijah and he oh, will yeah. he will yeah he will he'll do a good job so um yeah we're just gonna start with your um testimony you know when you shared the testimony of last video you obviously shared about your um fall it's funny because in the video you you were you know had all the stitches and you know yeah. um i think you recorded in the hospital but you know if you just want to recount that um event um and like w what happened what was it like i mean just from you know not everyone falls from 30 feet and survives you know so could you <laughs> maybe just go through the experience like um what happened yeah so i mean i was on the roof of our church um and i fell 30 feet to the skylight so i you know i've been working on my photography stuff and like um our church is going through a building project and i kind of wanted to you know document the whole thing show it to everybody to see look at all this progress that we've done and they just finished up like you know completely redoing the roof and stuff um so i got some photos got some video of that you know done with my thing walking back well, I don't know what was on the floor, something tripped, fell right through the ceiling. Um, and it was really weird when I fell because I didn't feel it. Like it was just, it was so sudden, like you didn't have time to think, didn't have time to react and like, oh, you know, something's happening. Um, it was just in an instant, you know, fall, hit the floor. Um, and it was really odd because I don't remember feeling like it hurt. Um, I don't remember like having that shock, like, ow, you know, screaming and this hurts so much, this hurts so much. I was just like in, in shock. Um, you know, immediately I was just trying to assess the situation and see what's going on out of kind of a way to lift my own spirit and just kind of make fun of the situation. I comedically, cause I couldn't feel anything. I was just like, ow, you know, kind of <laughs> just to make myself laugh or something. Um, and in that moment, I, you know, after maybe 10 minutes, just, you know, now that it pains finally kind of starting to sit in or something, um, I just started praying, um, asking the Lord for wisdom, just, you know, thanking him. And, be, you know, at the moment, I really could not feel anything. So I was convinced that I was maybe paralyzed because I, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't tell how I felt, I, you know, when I really had more time to look at it, I, you know, like fell right on my left arm. So that kind of softened the blow of everything. Um, but I thought that I fell on my back. So I was thinking mm -hmm. maybe I'm maybe I'm paralyzed. Maybe that's why I didn't feel anything. Um, so I, for a second, I wanted to think, oh, no, maybe I don't know what's going on. I started praying to the Lord. It's like, 
you know, heal this miraculously, you know, even in now, I mean, in a second, you can heal it and I can, you know, recover from this, whatever. And I can't say that it, it did happen or it didn't happen that I was paralyzed. But I know after I started praying, then I started getting the feeling back in my body um, and being able to, you know, get grip of everything that was going on. Um, so, you know, I'm on the floor for maybe 30, 40 minutes bleeding and just trying to sit up after that. 30, 40 minutes, finally able to make an attempt to sit up, failed. Um, that, you know, that one fail, I gave like everything that I had to try to sit up and it did not work. And that's when I started crying. I was like, I guess this is it. Uh, and uh, this, I guess, where it ends because I was really bleeding out a lot. I, you know, so much that I like my clothes were still on me. So they had stuck to the floor um, after I, I got down. Um, so pulling myself out of that, it was really hard. And that only lasted for like one, like three seconds where I was just like, no, that's not going to happen. That's not going to be um, the last day. I was like, somebody, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the things I need to do, people, somebody I want to see, uh, this is not the last moment I see um, my loved ones and stuff like that. So from there, I just started praying to Lord, you know, what do I do? Give me strength, you know, just still praying. Thank you. And thank you that even if I don't make it out, you, you know, saved my soul and my body may perish, but you know, my soul won't. Um, and from there, I just kind of started dragging myself, you know, with my arm, you know, that took another 30 minutes to finally pull myself, you know, my whole body, which is my one arm, just getting out. Um, and by the grace of God, you know, it only took about a minute to two minutes for somebody to see me. Um, and this is at night. Now it's night, you know, um, that, you know, the door that's by is like really small and I'm like on my knees, just trying to wave somebody, help, 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 help. And the person that actually came um, and saw me and um, called the ambulance was somebody that my dad actually um, fixed his car. So he had seen me a couple times. And that was the reason why he decided to be like, I know that guy. I need it. Well, you know, what's going on with him? Um, so that was, you know, not coincidence that this guy saw me and that this guy was the guy that you know, call the ambulance just from that one encounter. I, mean, I didn't even know him, but just he, my dad knew him and he saw me and he came and that, um, you know, ambulance came right away and kind of went through the whole thing. Um, but after that, you know, being in the hospital and everything, um, kind of weird. I, uh, because I couldn't really feel the pain too much, I just was kind of, I tried to keep as good of a mood as possible. Um all the paramedics that saw me were surprised that I even survived that fall. They were like, there's no way you fell from there. You know, that's not possible, you know, and it's just like, it's all of them shocked that I'm even able to be conscious because most people, um, you know, fall from that height, you're not, you're not awake. You're not oriented. So I was completely oriented. I was cracking jokes. I told the, I told the paramedic, you know, it's kind of sucks, but it's kind of cool. Cause I always wanted to see what a hospital looks like. Um, <laughs> and she thought that was the funniest thing ever. So I'm, you know, just trying to make light of the situation and everything like that. Um, and that's more or less what that fall was like. You know, it's a lot of stuff to say about there, everything else that ensued, but that was the actual fall and kind of how that went. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Wow. That's that's really crazy. You know, and and just, I mean, every time I think about it, it's like wow. Like, I mean, you could have literally died. You know, that was. Pete, I mean, much less to think about, like, you didn't break your arm, you didn't break your back, you didn't break, you know, well, I mean, you broke your arm, but not, not your, um, <laughs> you're not your back, not your leg, you didn't hit your skull, um, you know, and then and even die is, is just incredible. Um, I, I do want you to talk a little bit about, I know that, um, you know, when, when you were sharing um, the testimony where you're talking, you know, you were saying how prior before that, I don't know if it was a week or two weeks before, like, you felt like, um like death was attacking you you know like you kind of had mm -hmm. that feeling and you know pastor obviously came so can you just talk a little bit about that and and mm -hmm. a little backstory yeah yeah so i think i can't remember if it was two weeks or one week but it was really it was really recent to before the accident so maybe i'll just say maybe a week before um the accident like um i had always had this thing since i was young um, I can't remember when it started, maybe when I was seven or something, or I was just afraid of dying. Like, mm -hmm. even when I was saved, that thing was still there. Like, I, I'd, you know, I'd get these moments and I'd be like, 
oh, what happens when I die? What when am I gonna die? How's that gonna work out? You know, like I'd just be terrified. Like I wouldn't be able to breathe. I'd just be frozen. I'd like be shaking, and I'd just be terrified. Like I'd you know be uncontrollably crying. Um, and that was you know all started when I was little, and I just remember going into my dad's room and being like, oh, what's gonna happen when I'm gonna die? And I'm just gonna get terrified. And you know he didn't um have any answers for me he was just like it happens you know and so I kind of just kept going with that um feeling just sometimes it'd pop up out of nowhere and it'd go away right away and then a week before my accident um it just happened out of nowhere like the entire week before while I was in church I was fine nothing was you know upsetting me I was just like you know this is cool you know and just going about my regular day and then just out of nowhere um like right here um I was just terrified like I could not move from the spot I was just crying and I was shaking and I was you know scared and um I just felt like I needed to tell somebody so I told one person and I just started telling them how I felt and all that stuff um and then pastor saw and um and I'm always an optimistic person so I never complain about too much or anything uh, in, in time pastor asked me so I'm like no that's fine I'm kind you know that's cool um so <laughs> pastor's always used to me saying it's okay and this time he asked me are you okay I said no so that really caught him off guard you know it's like he never says no he never says that he's not okay yeah. um so pastor came and prayed for me um and I didn't really tell him too I didn't really tell him too much but he knew right away that it was you know spirit of death um um trying to cause fear in me and he prayed for me anointed me laid hands on me and everything and from that moment on, you know, that thing was, you know, completely wiped away, went away. Um, and I haven't felt like that ever um, since. But even during, you know, the whole thing, I, was not, I wasn't really afraid that I was going to die um, or anything like that. But definitely that thing from when I was younger was what was striking me then. Um, and if I, if he had, my pastor had not, pastor not prayed for me, um, I would have given in at yeah. that one moment when I tried to sit up. Mm -hmm. um because at that moment i was i was really afraid i was like i put everything that i had into try and make that one effort to sit up to try to get out of there um and if i was still afraid of death i would have mm -hmm. you know just cried myself there just passed out and you know pastor always says that somebody would have came and just saw me there lying unconscious bled out um and you know that could have gone a whole different way so definitely if pastor hadn't prayed for me if i hadn't said anything um you know that could have definitely been, you know, the end of my life. Yeah. You know, it's so amazing that you share that. There's a scripture I want to share, but I want to say, like, you know, life is so spiritual. Um, and, you know, I guess we don't think about it from that perspective, but it's just like how many people die daily because there wasn't a prayer? Like, can you imagine, you know, like mm -hmm. just that one prayer, you know, it gave you strength. Like in the scripture that I wanted to read was um, actually Romans chapter eight. Um, it says in verse 15 for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out abba father and there's another scripture i can't remember but it says that we've been delivered from like the fear of death or the bondage of death um i can't remember that exact one but you know it's just really incredible like even in the moment of you falling you know and in that whole moment like fear wasn't there you know like that's that's really incredible that's a big testimony because you know you would think like that would be a terrifying situation. You know what I'm saying? Where you would start freaking out. But the, the, the fact that God was able to give you, you know, peace, the fruit of peace, you know, the fruit of the spirit peace, even in that moment is like, it's incredible because that's not what, sh what should normally be going through our heads in a moment like that. So yeah, it's just, it's just incredible. I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely one thing that was really emphasized to me throughout this whole thing um, is definitely getting rid of any idea of this notion of self-made. You know, a lot of people think of that term in a, in a positive way, you know, that they worked hard and I'm, I'm mm -hmm. self-made and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but there's not a person that's ever existed that's been self-made. We've all, you know, been where we are and are going where we are because of somebody who gave to us, who contributed to us, who cared for us, who prayed for us. Um, and ultimately, all of us, even those, you know, of us who don't have a relationship with christ oh our you know existence and the, the things that we you know enjoy because of god the only person i like this definition of god you know when i was watching this video and this guy's a theologian they asked him on an exam define god he's like oh my gosh everybody starts sweating um he defined god as the only being that whose purpose is only in and of himself 
Um, so for any of us, then you know that 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 word self made is so dangerous because anytime anybody says that, he's saying I'm God. You know, you're not yeah. you don't know it, or you you maybe you're not intentional about saying it. But that's really what you're saying. I mean, definitely in that situation, if Pastor hadn't prayed for me, if I you know didn't have people that I cared about that I wanted to get back to. Um, that would have been it. If I was really, you know, so self-centered in myself, all I would have been thinking about is just me. Oh, I'm in pain. I can't believe this happening. I, you know, why is this happening? Oh, this doesn't, I don't deserve this. I, you know, just, or just really just thinking, considering all my pain, as opposed to, you know, I, I think a, a real, a real motivation for me to get out of there is like, I cannot have anybody else, you know, start crying because I died, you know, and I was like, I have to get out of here. I cannot you know, stay here. Um, so definitely if I had been, you know, self-centered in my motivations prior to that, um, even if pastor had prayed for me, that would have, you know, come back up in that yeah. moment and, you know, wouldn't have been able to get the strength that I needed to get out of there. Yeah. So I have a, a really interesting question. Like, you know, like you would figure, you know, to ask the question, you brought it up, like, where is God in the midst of this? Like, God, why did you permit this? Why did you allow this to happen? I mean, you know, so like what, what what have you learned from this experience? What have you learned about God? Or like, you know, even in the case where we read the Bible, um, Job, who God like have literally permitted, you know, sitting to afflict him with sickness. You know, there was a reason behind it. You know, God was, it, it, it doesn't seem like it makes sense, but we see the end result. So like, just what have you learned um, in this time, in this season, or, or just if you could give, because I know that just people are going to watch and say like, if God's real, why are bad things happening? Or, you know, maybe people believe in God, but it's like bad things are happening in my life. Like, what's the purpose of this? So I just, I just want to hear, you know, your input um, on mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So actually before, you know, I got injured, that was something that I was reading a lot. I was reading Job, you mm -hmm. know, doing a lot of study on Job. I mean, that's why I, you know, I was quoting Job in my prayers and stuff like that. So I was, uh, I was, you know, just reflecting on what, goes on in there and i think sometimes we think about job in the wrong light. we think about job as a book on how to how to you know why do people suffer um but i think more accurately job describes to us is god just and why should we trust that god is just um because when you see you know his three friends and stuff like that they're like job you must have done this you must have done that um but we know that job is righteous job hasn't done anything wrong um god himself declares job to be righteous and it kind of led me to this whole thing to understand that it, it's a really complex idea that i kind of don't you know don't want to spend 20 minutes to try to un, uh, unpack here but um it led me to really understand that we're going to be kind of dissatisfied if we want God to explain everything to us. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, it's a cliche, um, but ultimately our lives have to come to a place of trusting God because God's character is sometimes, you know, referenced to by, you know, like general terms, God is omnipotent. God is um omnipotent um god is omnipresent like he's everywhere he's all powerful and all that stuff but something that is always excluded out of that is god is also all wise god mm -hmm. is also all good god mm -hmm. is all good god is all powerful god is all wise so in him allowing things to happen it's not that he didn't have the power to not make it happen in him you know allowing things to happen it's not that he didn't have low power um it's not that he didn't have the power i'm um, sorry the wisdom to make a better decision and him being all good doesn't mean that he is you know doing something because it benefits somebody that he likes better than you whenever something happens there's always a reason for it like i like this i like this um kind of i don't know which one to call it parable or kind of just an example kind of a little story thing anecdote um this guy he has a son um and his son um finds a horse and he's like wow look a new horse and his neighbor's like wow lucky for your son to get a horse and the next day the horse breaks the kid's leg and, you know kicks it and breaks the kid's leg and like wow the neighbor's like that's pretty unlucky for you, your son to get kicked by the horse the next day a gang comes and they are looking for men to join their gang they're going to recruit them and they see the guy's son and he's like oh, you can't join your leg's broken 
And the neighbor again is like, wow, that's pretty lucky. Your son's leg was broken. So, you know, and all of this, we're making sense mm-hmm. of the situation that we see it. Wow. But God sees the whole situation. And he's planning this 20 years ahead of time. And we don't understand why things go on. But God permits some certain things to happen for our own good. And it just doesn't make sense to us. We're never going to be able to make sense of everything. We try to look for reason in everything. Um, It just isn't going to work. And we have to reach that point where whatever happens, you just say, God, I trust you because I believe that you are just, that you don't allow things to happen because of evil, because you're not capable, because you don't have the right wisdom. Um, And that's kind of what Job wrestles with. And, you know, his conversation is like, you know, you're not wise enough. And that's why he kind of shows him, are you considering every single thing you haven't even, you don't even know, you know, <laughs> you don't even know basic God biology yet. Them. Yeah. God yeah. goes them in that, in like, jo- yeah, that later part. And I, yeah. And I, yeah. And, and I think it's not really a roast, but the way that, you know, that I, I think a parent would tell you, it's like, yeah. have you, con- I don't think you've considered that mm-hmm. you spending a hundred dollars on this toy would, you know, leave us without food for a week, you know, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So definitely um, just knowing that, it's okay for me not to know everything, mm-hmm. but because who God is, I can trust him regardless of what goes on. And, you know, throughout the whole thing, um, that was my perspective. Like, what can I learn from this? How can I grow? And I definitely, you know, learned to have a lot more empathy for um, people that are suffering because, you know, for me, yeah. I've, you know, in high school, uh, I, I think you and I are pretty similar in that way that in high school, you know, we've always been successful. People are like, yeah, you're going to do great. You're a great athlete, all this stuff. I was, that was always me. Um, so for me to now lose all of that, I learned how much I need to rely on others, how I need to enjoy simple moments of, you know, having fun and making memories with others as opposed to just working. Because that was always my thing where I was like, I wanted to work, I wanted to work. And that's why, I, you know, kind of started doing, doing photography more because I wanted to capture those moments that I like are beautiful that just like something small something short but that that's going to stay with you longer than mm-hmm. man I put in 10 more hours today you know doing mm-hmm. work or something because nobody's going to look back when they're 70 saying you know what yeah. I should have worked 10 more hours that Friday you know <laughs> so so yeah. definitely I gained a lot in mm-hmm. in that injury um and it's obviously a testimony to the Lord because I could have been, you know, a lot worse now. The doctor said um, when he first gave me my diagnosis that I should have had a long-term disability, um, that it would have been at least um, six to eight months before I, you know, started getting back to some form of normalcy. Um, But in less than, you know, less than a year, hasn't even been a year yet, you know, four, five months now, you know, my arm's completely healed. Um, I'm not, you know, disabled in any type of form um the i haven't i haven't told this to anybody except for um one person um the money that i owed to the hospital right was a number i had not seen before it was very very scary um and i was thinking am i gonna have to drop out of school you know i you know, my whole my whole reason for moving to the u.s and my dad you know doing all the sacrifice that he's done was for me to get an education to be the first person in my family to graduate. Um, and I was thinking, because that's ruined. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm going to have to find some way to make, find some way to make money or something. Um, but by the grace of God, you know, I got help from this program that I'm in. They were like, we want to give you money, you know. Um, and then from that kind of just little help, the hospital, um, because I, you know, my doctor has always been a pretty grumpy guy, but whenever he sees me, he's like, wow, you're doing great. You're progressing so good. And the nurses are just shocked because they're like, this guy's so grumpy all the time. He's always happy when he sees you, you know, and I made sure to just always be kind to the people that were taking care of me and stuff like that. Um, and I think that really played a part in when I asked for financial assistance from the hospital and they waived um, all of my fees. So they applied wow. 100% charity to the money that I owed. So I owed almost... Um, Ooh, sixty thousand dollars or so. I mean, I've never had more than five thousand dollars in my account. <laughs> so you know that much money, they just waived it. Um, and you know, by God's grace, I'm not injured. Not gonna owe anybody any money. You know, living my life, my best life, and everything yeah. else like that. So definitely, um, just learn to be grateful. Learn to be humble. Um, 
and definitely get rid of the idea that um, anything is self-made that mm. you know try to push myself and always grind out everything because we all need help from others man that's i mean just hearing that it's 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 so incredible you know you know just what you were saying about um us trying to comprehend everything and understand everything um because it's like this thing happened that was seemingly terrible like it really seemed terrible it seemed like this was horrible but it's like god has literally almost un i mean you're healed now all your fees are canceled and it's like god taught you so much and it's just like if you didn't have that experience there's so much you wouldn't have learned you know mm -hmm. and it's just like it's just amazing thinking how god was able to take that situation and turn it around you know to still bring glory back to him and and it's just it's just um, uh, you know incredible just thinking about how how we think we're so wise and we know everything and it's like we literally know nothing we're just mm -hmm. a little speck in a speck of time literally <laughs> of all eternity with an everlasting yeah. god who knows everything whose existence himself and it's like we we think we know everything and we try to it's like it's like god is just is so yeah. amazing so i think it's I, funny i, I was oh, gonna yeah. make this analogy where yeah. kind of um you know we're we're reading up on our, you know, somebody goes to seminary, they are reading the Bible every day, praying day and night, fasting and all this stuff. And, you know, I think about a parent when, you know, their kid finally is like, oh, five plus five is 10. And like, yeah, good job. You did so good. You know, the parent's so proud anyways. And God's looking at us the same way. Oh, wow, I'm glad you did so good. Exactly, you probably learned five yeah. plus five. You know, exactly. and it's just, we're, you know, we're so excited to know and understand. And in all this, it's just like, God's like, I'm so proud of you, but, you know, it's like, you could learn, you could know more still. Yeah, it's so much more. Like, he, he literally confounds, like, the, the greatest scientific discovery is just like a five plus five to God, like a one plus one. Like, congratulations. Like, <laughs> it's like wow, it just, it, it, it just puts everything into perspective. So I just yeah. want you to, oh, did you want to say something? I mean, I mean, just a quick analogy, I guess, of that. I mean, I like analogies. I always kind of work on analogies of that. Kind of what you mentioned about that scientific discovery. Kind of um, um, when I was in uh, community college, I took a philosophy class, and I liked I liked a lot of the stuff that taught us, you know, a lot of ways to reason and logic and stuff like that. Um, and I found it so funny because what they were teaching us, it took, um, you know, philosophers, I mean, so much debate and so much discussion, and even now, still working on those thoughts and ideas. Um, and when you read the Bible, it's like, yeah, those principles that you're talking about, like, you know, the Bible already kind of affirmed that. So mm -hmm. I, 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 I heard this um, quote by this one teacher, he was like, philosophers will be working for hundreds of years to finally reach the top of the mountain of discovery and only be surprised to find out that a band of theologians was already sitting there waiting <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's so funny it's so mm -hmm. true so i just want you to close by um giving an encouragement you know for anyone who's watching now or anyone who will be watching you know who's going through you know challenges or you know kind of like you know, like, where is God in the midst of this? Like, I, I really can't see him. Like, I want you to give, like, one final encouragement and also, you know, to just pray, um, you know, however you felt in your heart to pray. Mm -hmm. um, thing I'll say, I guess, um, is first to say that your pain is legitimate. Um, whether you are the first to suffer it or, you know, somebody else has suffered it, your pain is unique. Um, and it's something, you know, that needs to be recognized. It should, we shouldn't sweep under the rug pain. You know, sometimes, I don't know, I used, I used to do that a lot where I was just like, well, who cares? Just move on. Um, but you need to allow yourself time to grieve and to process and to, you know, work through those emotions. But at one point, you need to also, you know, solve the, the you problem, the me problem. Um, when, um, I always think about it this way. Um, when we have, uh, in this, I think it was Ezekiel, or I can't remember where it was, but we had a description of what um, the enemy entails for himself. You know, I will ascend. I will make myself greater. I will be this and stuff. And so the entire time, I kind of quote use that as the I problem. Oh, I, 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 mm -hmm. I. And then mm -hmm. when, I think when the, um, when the enemy was trying to tempt Eve, 
He's saying, you will be like God. You yeah. will see this. You will do that. Our, a lot of our problems are always in self-centeredness, in ourselves being the center of my problem. Mm. In that moment, honestly, I'm, I know that I was suffering more than anybody else at, you know, that, I, that I knew. But at the same time, I took, uh, you know, because I was able to see past myself, I thought, okay, yeah, I'm suffering, but there's somebody else who doesn't even have an arm. There's somebody else who actually landed on their back and died. Yeah. I was, you know, at the hospital, I saw people that were just screaming and in pain. And, you know, like, like one guy fell less than I did, 10 feet, right? And his, you know, both his legs were shattered. You know, he had casts and like pins, the kind of the, the one that I had. So I had pins in my arm to stabilize my bone. And he had, you know, that in both of his legs, like way bigger than I did. So I could have, you know, kept thinking about myself, but when I consider other, it doesn't, it doesn't match. And even if I wasn't, you know, even, even injured, I'm, you know, lucky enough to live in a country where it's like, okay, I, I receive medical attention, even though I didn't have the money to pay for it. In other countries, when um, in Mexico, my mom would tell me that's where I was born. And it's like, if you didn't have the money, they just wouldn't, they wouldn't pick you up. They wouldn't, you know, they would just let you out there. And a lot of people would just die because they don't have the money for it. So how, how, you know, how fortunate am I, how blessed am I that, you know, I was able to receive help nonetheless and not have to pay for it because, you know, there's this system there to help me, these people there that were there to help me. So definitely I would say allow yourself to grieve, but then consider what other people are going through. It's, it's selfish for us to be consumed in our own pain because there's somebody else that's also hurting. You know, my parents... My dad cried for the first time in his life and, you know, all that had to go on. So I'm over here injured. I can barely walk and I still had to talk to him and, you know, calm him down and tell him, you know, I love you and all this stuff and pray for him then and there. Um, and if I had been so consumed in my own pain, that wouldn't have given me an opportunity to preach to him about Christ. That wouldn't have given me an opportunity mm -hmm. to get that connection because I had never made that connection with my dad. Mm -hmm. You know, he had always put up this wall. And, and like I said, and that and that was an opportunity that I had only gotten because of wow. this injury. You know, that finally is what allowed him to break through his shell, to open up and say, no, I, I do love you. It's just hard for me because my parents never said this stuff to me. So yeah. definitely getting out of thinking about myself. Uh, you know, I like this message that pastor preached one time. I was like, I was um, labeled li living beyond yourself. Yeah. So definitely, yeah. definitely always having that consideration. Mm -hmm. Yes, me, but what about everybody else, you know? Um, so definitely, your pain's legitimate, your pain's unique, um, but it could have been much worse. And definitely somebody else does have it worse, so keep them in mind as well. Amen. So, yeah, if you just want to pray, you know, whatever's on your heart, you know, feel free to. Yeah. Okay, let's pray. So... Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for preserving us, for keeping us all, Lord. Despite what any of us are going through, you have made it possible for all of us to be healed, for all of us to be restored, for all of us to made, be made whole because of what you sacrificed on the cross. Lord, your body was torn. Your image was destroyed. You are helpless and without anybody to rescue you so that we would always have the ability to be rescued. Father, I pray that you help us to trust in you regardless of what goes on, that you give us insight into what your character is so that we would know, Lord, that you are faithful, that you are committed to us, that you intend the best for us, Lord, and that you see each and every one of us for the pain that we've received and that you are willing to heal us. Lord, I just ask for this word, Lord God, this time that we spent together to help somebody else to understand. If not, if not, if it's not something that they're personally go to, to help them gain a new perspective on how they can treat others, Lord. I pray that you help us all to live beyond ourselves, not to see ourselves as a center of attention, but to follow your law, to love you and to love others as your image, to humble ourselves, to know that we need help, to humble ourselves, to know that we are not the end all and be all, that we are not the greatest, but that you yourself are the greatest, that those who you have sent to us, Lord God, are capable of being loved and that, Lord, whatever it is that you have in store for us, we know that it is good. So, Father God, I just ask that you help anyone that is listening to this to trust you, to love you and believe in you and to share that same joy, that same presence, that same peace that you give into them and to give it to others.
It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 So thank you so much, Eliza, Elijah, for being willing to um, share your testimony. It was definitely awesome. Um, thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, if you're still on, um, it would be awesome if you could um, definitely share this. You know, you're able to share it. It'll be on IG Live after, you know, share it to your timeline because there's definitely people who are in need um, to hear stuff like this. And as Elijah was just praying, you know, that we um, should live beyond ourselves. I know that sometimes posting the things of God on our social media may not be the coolest thing, but mm -hmm. you never know who um, could need it in that very moment. So I would just encourage us to do that. So again, thank you everyone. Um, and we'll see you all on the next one. Thank you, Elijah. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.